I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Alright, I'm going to do a little video on this Hearts Spades cocktail machine made by Allied Leisure. I believe this is the only Allied Leisure machine I've ever owned. And it's definitely very unique and very different in the way they manufactured the machine. So many cool and subtle differences, just the way that the mechanics are, the, um, you know, like a lot of these mechanisms under the play field. I don't know if I can show you. Oh, shit. Let's see if I can do this briefly. But a lot of this stuff is uh, mm. plastic. So these things probably didn't hold up too well over the years. But look at this plastic bushing here on the flipper. You got plastic uh, slingshot mechs. Um, they did things very differently. And, you know, I imagine uh, they didn't hold up too well over time. Fortunately, there's only about 6,000 plays on this one. So this is in really immaculate shape and inside and out so it's nice to see in it in its full original condition i don't know that there's been much of any repairs or hacks or anything on this machine uh, i think this is oh, I, I should have checked the old internet pinball database but maybe there's a date somewhere but i believe this is late 70s and uh from what i understand allied leisure had many cocktail machines and there were about maybe four of them that uh, used the exact same um, software for the game. So it's the same rules for every game, except they just changed the orientation of the targets and rollovers and whatnot. So they, they basically, uh, you know, were able to use the same software for multiple games by, uh, by doing that. So that's kind of neat. My plan is to just kind of figure out what the heck the rules are. Uh, I started doing it on my own and I'm like, you know what, why don't we just do it all together because I think it's more fun that way. Now this game, these games didn't have any memory, so it doesn't save your credits, doesn't save your high score. It's old school, so you gotta, you know, start from scratch. Uh, every time you turn it on, we gotta go in the coin door and add a credit. One moment. And the knocker goes off every time you add a credit, so that's kind of cute. I have the glass off so that uh, we can figure out the rules with our hands. This is set to five balls. Oh, another thing to note is that these are the longest flippers probably in the history of pinball, other than novelty flippers on game like Hot Hand, early Stern game where there's that big flipper spinning around, and maybe another game or two like that. I think I have a flipper bat somewhere close by. One moment. Okay, check this out. This is a standard Williams flipper bat. Okay. And, whoa, oops, I, hit, I started the game. I don't know how well you can see that, but here is maybe on this side. It has got to be a quarter inch longer. I don't know how well you can see that or not, but yeah. So, carrot flippers uh, are not even as long. All right, so let's try and figure out what the heck it is that we're supposed to do in this game of hearts spades, which I don't know why they didn't put an and in between because it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. I believe when you plunge the ball, this switch needs to activate to say, hey, game on. So we're gonna tell the game that we are live. Uh, okay, so first things first, we got a couple rollovers over here. This says heart value. So I hit that, and you can see there's some hearts here, which I thought were heart values, and then there's spades here, which I thought were spade values. But that is just your standard old bonus. So this is ace, which is kind of cool. Ace, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. Spade value rollover is just your bonus. 
Uh, okay, so the way to build up these guys, see, you get a thousand for each of these, I believe. So if I have four, then I will get 4,000. If I have three of these, I'll get 3,000. I know a little bit about the game, not too much, but I know you can build that up by hitting the slingshot of all things. So I was thinking that forfeit heart, what does forfeit heart mean? I thought maybe you'd lose some value there, but uh, let's hit that. Nope, forfeit heart means bonus. <laughs> Not intuitive so far. So we can build up spade value on that side, heart value on that side, etc. And now to cash these values in, there's a couple targets. Here's one here. This is a, you can see how there's one red target and two uh, white ones. By the way, these targets are pretty cool. They're actually uh, textured, like bullseye style. Uh, what the heck was that? Spade value? Okay, so spade doesn't seem to do anything except give you 500 points. Heart value, what is this gonna do? Okay, so that actually collects the heart value. I heard three chimes there, so there's our 3,000 points. There's one black target over here that says spade value. So that's gonna collect our 3,000. Well, let's make it four. Heard four uh, chimes there, so 4,000 points. So. That is somewhat straightforward. <laughs> Very unique though. Hit the slingshots to build up these values. Hit this target to collect it here and this target to collect the spade over here. So that much I do know. Now we got these pretty cool drop targets. Um, one red, one black. Let's hit that down. Obviously it's gonna be 500 points. And for whatever reason that lit the ace of hearts. Hmm, so maybe this will forfeit that. Okay. Interesting. So I guess this target will light this. And then this rollover will forfeit that. Why is that? What does it all mean? Why do we want those lit? Let's try and figure this out. So let's light that. Now there's a stand-up target behind... This drop target, it's got a king here, so what happens if we hit that? Okay, that just builds up your bonus. And looks like 10,000 is max bonus, but it's still giving a thousand per hit. For whatever reason, this king is only 500 points, so let's hit that. Oh, okay, something happened there. Apparently hitting both targets doubles your bonus count. You know, there are some rules here that we could have read, but hey, that's not as fun. So with that theory, let's hit both targets again. and see if we get a triple bonus. Hey, what do you know? Okay, we're learning. So if I just hit, so that's actually pretty neat. So you really want to try and hit these drop targets, but without forfeiting them. So if you have one drop target down, you probably don't want to send it back up top because uh, that is potentially going to forfeit your progress there. So that's a pretty neat rule. I like that. Okay, so let's knock that down. And what's this target do? Just bonus? I think <clears throat> now's a good time to collect our bonus so we can build it back up. So we should be getting 30,000 points and be at... 57,000 points when all is said and done, except as I'm draining and I'm be rolling over this target, which is spade value. So let's see what happens. Oh, I didn't roll over it. Fifty-seven thousand as predicted. Okay, cool. So let's uh, liven up the play field with that switch. And, uh, okay, what else do we got here? So, there is these two targets here. That's just a straight up 500. Straight up 500. This roll over here, straight up 500. Same thing over there. And then I imagine these two.
two targets are also the same. No, okay. This one target here with, oh, look at that. There's more forfeiting going on here. It says forfeit, forfeit, collect. Oh yeah, we knew that that collects your heart value, but there's some forfeiting targets here and here. Wow, that's pretty cool. You really got to be accurate when you're trying to hit these drop targets because you can't hit this switch, this switch, these two, or these two switches, or you will lose your progress. So that's actually pretty cool. This target here seems to advance bonus. Uh, whereas this one doesn't, this one does. So these two are actually advanced bonus. This one and this one, but not those guys. Okay. That's very random. All right. We got some cards, advanced bonus, open gate, advanced bonus, open gate. So I guess. Yeah, now's a good time to talk about this gate. You can't really see it, but in this little uh, zone here, again, plastic, there's a gate that like opens and closes. So you're either gonna come down here or you're gonna come here. This says collect hearts, this says close gate. So let's hit this, have a, have a look at this and let's see what happens to this gate when I hit this target. There we go, it is open. I don't know if you can see that. So that will now give me a chance to uh, collect hearts. So that's pretty cool. And then let's build up the heart value and let's roll down here and collect the, uh, the hearts. There we go. Uh, and then how do we close the gate? So if I hit this roll over here, yeah, that closes the gate. So now it'll go out that hole. Okay, so we're learning, we're learning. Um, this says change heart's value. Yeah, we know that. So here's something else we gotta figure out. Once both of these are to the top, it lights the king of spades, special when lit. Okay, I think I remember this. So this means special is available. And I believe the two places to collect that are king of spades. King of Spades, which is draining. So we should hear a knock if I roll over this switch. Yep. And that collects that. So let's build that back up again. Oh, you can overshoot. That's pretty cool. That makes it especially difficult since you can't really aim for the slingshots. So you have to have both these targets exactly at four to light the special man that would be tricky to do in the arcade holy so can i collect this king of spades anywhere else because there's this dude who's a king of spades what happens if i hit this we light that we know that what about this hey what do you know there's a target to collect a special uh, pretty freaking cool this it's very unorthodox um, layout and rule set. There's just targets and specials and stuff all over the place. It's just, you can kind of tell that they use the same software in multiple games. This is, they probably designed the first one and it was very intuitive. And then the second one got a little out of whack. And then by the time they got to the fourth one, it got even more out of whack. So this feels like it was definitely not the first one they designed and with that same software. So what else do we got? Here is value. That roller is just a thousand points. We know that's collect hearts here. Let's see if that works. Yep. And okay, well, I think we pretty much know all the rules now. We want to hit this red target to get 2x. Resets the targets. Hit these again without forfeiting and get our 3x, so 30,000 max and collect. And other incidental, incidental points look like 
100 for the pop bumper here, 10 for these pop bumpers. Look how nice everything is in terms of condition. Original pop bumper caps, the art's all nice. Like nobody tried to clean it and wipe the paint right off, which can certainly happen pretty easily. All the plastics are beautiful. This game is just a, a real uh, treat to own to see um, something this old in such nice condition. It's beautiful. Okay, now I think it's time to actually uh, play out the last three balls and see if I can uh, implement any of the uh, strategies we just learned. So now that I know what I'm kind of doing, it's basically drop targets all day long. So here we go. I'd like to open the gate, I imagine. Whoa. Now, I don't even know if you can hit these drop targets directly, but I'm certainly going to try. A little, little bit of help from the pop bumpers. Oh, I forfeited. If you are in the arcade playing this back in the late 70s, early 80s, and you're just walking up to this game, Man, you'd have no friggin' idea what is happening. Drop targets are going up, drop targets are going down. After some number of games, I'm sure you'd kind of figure it out. But unless you really take the 20 minutes to, to learn everything right up front, then it would be very chaotic, I imagine. Open gate. There we go. Opportunity to collect some parts. This would be like, oh my God, it's chaotic. I was gonna say, this would be a horrible tournament game. This is just so random. Slingshots build value. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's so very random. I think it would be blacklisted from any pinball tournament. Whoa. Okay, so that didn't go very well. So obviously I need to, uh, Hey, we got three free games, one from each out lane and one from that King of Spades. So let's start another game. Even the flipper buttons on this thing. What? Oh, I hit the flipper button and the ball popped in the shooter lane. That's because I simultaneously hit the start button with my knee. But I was just going to say, just everything is so just slightly different on, on this uh, game. Even the flipper buttons, they feel like they're like really concave, so you stick your finger in, they're like innies. So, just the little differences. Oh, fourth bit. So, I'm gonna play out this full game. One of my goals is to actually hit that left orbit. Or the drop target over and over again. Man, oh man. This is chaos. Alright. What? If, oh, okay. Don't try the bounce pass on a very slow rolling uh, ball there. Alright. Opened up the gate. Yeah. My goal. There we go. Boom. Double is to get max bonus. That's that's my wizard mode. Or maybe I'll call it super jackpot. Oh, uh, I'd um, double 18,000. So, you know, not too far off the 30,000 max. Okay, ball three in play. Be able to aim better with these longer flippers but I just feel like I'm hitting the pop bumpers every friggin shot okay wow this game's going quick I was thinking I should put it on three ball but maybe I will keep it four. Oh, if I was pumping and dumping on this game it would be costly
Left orbit. Oh. Man, oh man. That was, what, a 30 second game? Definitely got to have one more. And maybe I'll even start the game properly with my hand this time. Okay. Max bonus for the wizard mode. I gotta plunge softer. Okay, that was a good start. Okay. Yeah, it's very random how, um, you know, you can get the 4X, but then go back to 1X. Um, I'd like it if it just stayed at 4X till you collect it, but hey, what can you do? There we go. Okay, I'm calling that the jackpot, and the 3X max is the super jackpot. That's what I'm calling it. No. That's not nice feed. Actually, I think this game's a little bit leaning to the right, so that's my bad. Okay. I plunged a little lighter this time. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Open the gate. Whoa. forfeit. It's too much chaos. Oh. I nailed that friggin directly and it punished me. Okay, ball three in play. Oh yeah, that's cute. Usually when you open a, a gate, you kind of, it feels like very valuable because it you feels like, you feel like it's going to save you from an out lane, but that gate don't really seem to do a whole lot. This game just kind of plays itself. Oh, come on. This game is not easy to move either. So I'm trying to nudge, but it ain't budging. Ball four and play. There's my cake used up. I was just thinking how I haven't achieved any of my goals yet. I almost made it up there. I think the geometry isn't exactly very smooth to that left orbit. Okay, let's try and trap up here and orbit it. Okay, gotta go later. Even later. See, you can see the lean. There we go. Boom. I haven't made that shot yet. I just wanted to make that shot. That's all. Now, for the super jackpot. Oh, I drain there every single time. Okay, I'm playing one more game. So, if I don't do it on this game, then oh well. This does have that one more game appeal to it, you know? Like, just one more game. That left orbit is so clunky, it makes you think George Gomez designed it, huh? Who is the king of clunk? Silverball Chronicles did an episode. Oh, I saved it. On the King of Clunk. I don't know if that was Gomez or not, but. There we go, there we go. Come on. Get up there. Oh, nice bonus collected. I'm two drop targets away from Super Jackpot. One drop target away from Super Jackpot. Come on. Woo! Okay, this is it, boys and girls, for the money. 
Okay, I'm gonna just send it up top and hope pop bumpers give me a hand. Oh, baby! Get it. Come on! I'm gonna be forfeiting. I'm gonna be forfeiting. Yes! I did it. Can you believe that? Super jackpot, triple bonus, max collect. That was my goal. All right, so now. I don't think there's a way to collect your bonus in the middle of the game, so I'm locked into max bonus. So now let's try and get both these up to 4x and, and light the king of spades. That's my next goal. Can I just backflip it into those things? No. Oh, you again. Oh. Okay, what do I need? I need... Three reds. Okay, I got my spades. Just needed uh, two more reds. But here's the max bonus countdown. My super jackpot. And it looks like my light bulb might have went out in that pop bumper. So ball and play number three. Okay. If I play my cards right here, oh, pun unintended then uh, this could be the greatest game of hearts spades ever recorded in the history of this machine. It may be the only video ever recorded, but hey, that's something. Don't forfeit my spade. Actually, I can't forfeit my spade. It's my heart that I don't want forfeited. I don't know if you noticed, but I learned my lesson enough times. Oh my god, on that right nudge there that I cranked the machine that time. There is definitely a tilt bob in here, but fortunately I did not uh, tilt. Come on, fade! Oh, can't get much closer without hitting it. That's trouble. Hundred thousand. I actually haven't been paying attention to the scores in the previous games, but I imagine this has got to be the best. One. This would be a great game oh, to play for loonies on a Friday night with the boys, because it is so random and sporadic. It's like pretty much anybody's game. Hey. I heard the knocker go off. I must have hit uh, replay score. 109,000 equals a replay. Oh, I was going to start going for the next replay value, 147. But game is over. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that pretty much covers this game. So that was fun. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you guys on the next one.